Remember during the primaries when Biden was, you know, everyone obviously in the Democratic Party, the base, you know, overwhelmingly support Medicare for all. Um, but Biden was openly hostile against Medicare for all. And he was putting out his own public option type plan, um, which progressives were, you know, were like, OK, it's better than nothing. So. Um, I guess, you know, let's support Biden. He says he's for a public option, et cetera, et cetera. Pramila Jayapal in that interview with Marianne Williamson kept saying that she got all these commitments. You know, progressives have, have gotten these commitments from Biden that, you know, the the public option plan will be administered through Medicare and not through these private companies, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to make sure that we were putting pressure on Biden um, and, you know, to fulfill some of these commitments that we got, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I was skeptical about that because I know Joe Biden. I know Joe Biden has been bought and paid for by pharmaceutical industry for a long time, decades at this point. Um, and so I'm like, why would you ever, just because he said some, you know, that he said some nice things and promised you or gave you commitments in some task force, why do you think he would ever fight for that without any pressure? Um, there's, there's just no evidence. There's no empirical evidence that that would be the case. And, you know, we got, you know, us force the vote type, uh, you know, strategy folks, um, get ostracized about it. But to me, it's, it's, it's more, th it's more, a a lesson, right? It's more why, why, if it hasn't worked in the past, if our strategy hasn't worked in the past, what makes me think it's going to work in the future if none of the conditions change, right? None of the underlying conditions change. And so I want to take a look at this video because Mehdi Hassan interviewed a uh, close uh, Cedric Richmond, who's a you know senior, senior advisor to Joe Biden in the White House. And I want to take a look at this exchange because I think it's so telling about the way, you know, the thought and ideology that, you know, these these neoliberals have that are very high up in Joe Biden's cabinet. Uh, this guy's a senior advisor. So I'm, you know, ostensibly he's talking to Joe Biden every single day and he's advising him on these things. And so let's take a look at what he had to say to Mehdi Hassan in this interview. Talk about one of those. Today's the 11th anniversary of the Affordable Care Act. As you say, the rescue plan expands subsidies to ACA plans, making premiums much cheaper for many families. That's a good thing. But it could also spend an estimated $35 billion fully covering COBRA for around 2 million unemployed people for just six months. How is that a good use of that money? $35 billion subsidizing insurance companies for six months. Wouldn't that money be better invested towards building universal health care in this country? Well, clearly you have health insurance right now. Uh, but the question is, you ought to pose that to people who have lost their job through no fault of their own that has lost their health insurance and they need a bridge so that they stay uh, with insurance so that they can get that checkup and detect cancer early. It's very easy for people to make judgment calls when they're not uh, in other people's shoes. And I won't do that. Uh, I won't put a price on lives. I won't put a price hold, on. Hold on. Wait, hold, hold on. on. Let me hold on. It, okay. Let's just stop it there real quick, because I mean, that's a he's just gaslighting. He's gaslighting, saying, you know, you, you must you're comfortable. You have health care. Um, so you can't criticize our plan of pouring massive amounts of money into these health insurance companies who are the very people that on the back end are not approving these claims that are not granting these people health care or just price gouging them and then you know, saying, okay, we'll cover some small part of it. And then these people still have to go into medical bankruptcy because they get sick. So th this is some, this is, you know, this is kind of the pathology, or I guess more of the, the psychology that they, they approach these issues from. And it's, and it's, it's, it's just unreal. And this is what we have to fight back against because this is a Democrat who's talking about funding you know like Mehdi Hassan is saying instead of actually expanding Medicare or building towards a universal health care system like Joe Biden promised that he would do instead they're going to fund these these COBRA subsidies to the tune of billions and billions and billions of dollars of just wasteful wasteful spending and uh, Mehdi, Mehdi will get more into that 
uh, throughout the rest of the day. No, with, with respect, on, wait. Okay. No, but I'm not going to put a price tag on a woman finding out that she has early stages of breast cancer so that we can beat it. I mean, look, it, did we rise to the moment? Yes. Did we spend $1.9 trillion? We did. You know why? Because there was $1.9 trillion worth of problems in this country that we were trying to fix. Yes. So with respect, I just need to push back a little bit. I'm in favor of you spending $1.9 trillion. I'd have gone higher. I'm very happy that you're spending lots of money. Uh, and as for the money on health care, it's not that I don't want you to spend $35 billion on health care. Uh, I'm in favor of universal health care. When you say there's no price tag on health care, the problem is you're, the president, Joe Biden, told us there is. He says we can't afford Medicare for all. I'm saying if you can afford $35 billion to give to COBRA, which is a very inefficient, overpriced way of giving people health care, why not spend that money on a universal health care system that helps everyone, not just insurance companies? Well, remember, this is a response to a pandemic. If if we didn't have COVID-19, you wouldn't see us doing uh, that COBRA appropriation. So remember, so we're, we're probably saying close to the same thing, but remember this is in response to people losing their jobs through no fault of their own. And if you don't have COVID-19 out there, people are not losing their jobs in record numbers through no fault of their own. So there's just so much bullshit caked into this two minute clip but he's saying they're not putting a price tag on people's lives now that's literally what a for-profit health insurance industry does it puts price tags on people's lives and if the price tag is too high then people will die if they can't afford it so that's literally what the our health care system does is put price tags on people's lives so right there i mean that's just complete uh, like i say a lot of times it's complete projection right um they know they're spending a wild, insane amounts of money on health, you know, wasteful, wasteful health insurance spending um, instead of just expanding Medicare like Bernie had a proposal to do. They, they know they're doing that. And so what he's going to say is, oh, you know, you actually don't care about people because you, you don't agree with us giving massive amounts of money away to, to health ins the health insurance industry. You must not want people to have health care. Like this is the this is the Democratic Party line. Whenever you're further to the left of them, they smear you as oh, you must be further to the right. You must not want anyone to have a health insurance. You must want well, what do you want? Trump's health care plan is Trump better? Is that what you want? Like this is what they do all the time, and it's just at this point, it's just so comical. It's so comical. It's the same thing that they'll do on every single bill that they did the, the last reconciliation bill. Oh, you don't want you want the unemployment insurance to expire what are you a monster like no i i want them to have the 600 dollars in unemployment like the gop gave them uh you know during the trump administration and i also want the check to be full two thousand dollars i want it to be like i want more things i don't want less things that's what you want that's what you're doing right and and he's like yeah we're i think we're saying close to the same thing no we're saying wildly very wildly different things and I, I don't know how much pushback Medicaid gave him after that. Um, I'm surprised MSNB, MSNBC even let Medi say all that stuff. Um, but it's just, it's it's wild. This is the system we live under. Um, these are the people run, running the country. This is the guy that's in Joe Biden's ear. Do you, do you really think there's going to be a public option coming up soon? Like with this, with this tone coming from the White House, do you really think that we're going to get that public option, um, Pramila Jayapal, that, Biden committed to you think you're going to be able to get that without forcing some votes <laughs> and let's not forget let me share this too because this is in the next in the next reconciliation bill and look look right here what we have more of ACA subsidies more ACA subsidies if they're going to keep pouring more and more money into Obamacare do you think they're really going to spend political capital building a public option plan no they're not gonna do that joe biden does joe biden was never for that because i think one of his first fundraisers was at a pharmaceutical ceo's house i mean guys he does not for any of these things he's a republican he's legislated like a republican his entire life so no we're not gonna get a public option i'm sorry like i would re really love us to get one but there's no way we get one with joe biden in office because he doesn't support that. He's not going to fight for that. And the people that are in 
his ear are people like Cedric Rich- Richmond who he's going to criticize you if you're criticizing their plan to just pour massive amounts of money into the health insur- health insurance industry, pharmaceutical industry. And, and let's take a look at this because this is the reason he's he's doing that. Um, from 2000, his career, he's taken, let's see, $218,000 from ph- pharmaceutical com- companies going straight to his campaign and ensure that he can stay in power. At, you know, time after time for, I guess it's 13 years here. Now he's in the White House. You see, he took $272,000 from lobbyists. So I'm sure a lot of that includes health insurance lobbyists. Um, I mean, he's taken a bunch of money from oil and gas, lawyers and law. I mean, the, the guy's corrupted to the to the core um, and he's in Joe Biden's administration. He's advising Joe Biden. And these are the reason this is the reason we can't have nice things in this country. And, you know, I, I don't I don't see a public option coming. Um, I don't I mean, unless progressives plan on stop <laughs> stopping. So, you know, holding up some bills and forcing some stuff into bills. Joe Biden's not going to just fight for that out of the kindness of his heart. Um, and he's definitely not going to do a damn thing to get people like Joe Manchin on board. So unfortunately that's, uh, the sad state of affairs that we live in.